Hi, my name is Kristen Grassi. I am the CEO of TalkTech, a PR agency for tech startups. I'm also a reporter for City Biz List. And we are here today with Obi O'Mealy Jr. He is the co-founder and CEO of The Cut. Nice to have you, Obi. Thank you so much for having me, Kristen. And thank you so much for City Biz for giving me this opportunity. You are very welcome. We are excited to hear from you today. So let's just jump into the questions. Um, so can you share a little bit about your personal background? In 2014, I graduated with my BBA in economics from James Madison University, go Dukes. Um, after interning or after graduation, I interned for a data analyst, as a data analyst for a tech startup where I helped them pretty much understand churn and a little other metrics around their business. Um, following that internship, I learned how to code with the help of a few friends and was able to land a job at Wells Fargo as a software engineer. And after that, I ended up moving back here to DC where I spent the last, um, I guess, where, before I went into the cut, where I spent time working as a software engineer at Accenture. Nice, okay. And what led you on your entrepreneurial journey to, to launch the cut? Um, and I also heard that you were part of the Techstar program in 2018, if you could tell us a little bit about that as well. Absolutely. I mean, I feel like for most entrepreneurs, really, you're driven to it from personal need. And so my co-founder, Chris and I, who have actually been best friends from, since high school, we had both fallen victim of bad haircuts throughout, a, throughout <laughs> our lives. I, when I had just moved to North Carolina, I'd gone almost two months without a haircut, which for me was entirely too long. And my <laughs> co-founder had such a bad haircut in California that he ended up cutting his hair completely off going bald and then proceeded to growing his hair all past shoulder length for two years. So like you could say we both felt the problem pretty personally and pretty passionately. And so we ended up moving back home to DC um, around 2016 and we were both looking for our next opportunity. And so we realized that it shouldn't be this hard to get a great haircut and that there was, a, there was definitely a solution that could be built. Um, and so we married our understanding of technology from our work experience and then just us being, I guess, tech native and understanding how technology works um, at a cultural level. And that's led us to starting the cut in 2016. Um, and then in the 2018, we ended up getting into Techstar, which is super exciting. Um, and we learned so much through that program. And following that, actually, as we were rounding out that program, we were excited to like, realize that we, would, we were a part of the 30 and 30 list um, for Forbes 30 and 30 list that in that year. And um, where is the cut today? Can you give us some ideas of, of what your numbers look like? Um, and then also, how do you position yourself relative to competition that's out there? Because I know it's a pretty yep. big marketplace. I, I think I read somewhere that it was 20, a $20 billion marketplace. Absolutely. So the cut builds software for barbers and barber shops. And we're sitting in, like you mentioned, the $20 billion market. And basically, we connect barbers with clients, making it super easy for them to book, find, and discover barbers around the country and today we've grown to just about 70,000 barbers around the country wow. nearly 2 million total users and we've booked over 16 million appointments since um, inception and there like you mentioned there are a few other apps out there in the market um, a few of them cater to the full beauty space so that includes beauticians estheticians and people who cater to more of the female side of the market um, but by focusing specifically on barbers, we're able to build a brand that they can identify with. And it also helps with customer discovery because now we're the trusted place for anyone looking for a barber who can give them a great haircut. Got it. And how many barbers are on the app? Uh, just about 70,000 around the country. Very impressive. So you. can you also identify um, a tipping point in the business? Um, when did you start to see success? And what did, what did that look like? For sure. Uh, I'd say... Our first time point probably came in 2017 when we released our Android version. So we launched with just iOS and we'd grown to about like a little over 10,000 users. But once we released Android a year later, our growth nearly tripled or more than tripled, I should say, for the remainder of the year. And then we ended out that year in 2017 with over 100,000 users. So that was the first time we were like, wow. So like we're actually building a, building a solution to a problem that a lot of people have. Um, and then I'd say the most recent tipping point was in 2019 last fall when we released our subscription model where we still saw, we lost some users, but we started to see so many more barbers come in because now they saw more validation in our platform and we've been able to help them grow their business even further. And how are you getting users on the app, on the barber side and on the customer side? On the barber side and on the user side, a majority of our 
growth initiatives are around social media. So we really understand how to use social media to reach both barbers and their customers. Uh, we run different campaigns. We've built a community of over, well, we now have about 120,000 followers. And so that's really what's driven us um, from the gates. I know when we initially started, we spent hours DMing barbers on Instagram just to get them to try out our platform. So that's been incredibly helpful. And then uh, we support all our Instagram initiatives by running ads. We've run ads on Facebook. We've run a few ads on Google AdWords. Um, but honestly, organic growth and word of mouth has really carried us a long way. And is that how barbers were um, booking appointments previously through their, I guess, through their phone and through social media? Well, I'd say a majority of barbers were booking appointments by hand or not at all. So they were either doing walk-ins or just trying to manage it like via a Rolodex or just their mental uh, calendar. Like and so, yeah, exactly. But then I, in 2015, 2016, when Instagram really started to take hold, you started to see more and more barbers use their Instagram as their way to just get the book. And so they would um, elicit DMs as appointments from customers. And so we would then just reach out to them and say, hey, use the cut. It's a much better way than managing appointments via DM, DMs. And then you get the added benefit of being discovered by anyone who wants to find a barber just by them downloading the app and you having a visible profile. Got it. Okay. And can you, um, I guess like on the other side of the coin, what is the biggest hurdle that you've had to overcome to date? I'd say the biggest hurdle is just the industry in itself. It's incredibly fragmented, which means there aren't many means of distribution. Um, like there's no like publication that they all go to or any one like YouTube channel or anything like that. So we've had to be really scrappy and that's actually what led us to like really building a community around our Instagram um, because we needed a way to reach barbers at scale and we've continued to build out that community and leverage them to help us grow. Okay. And with COVID going on right now, how has it affected the cut and how have you persevered? Because I know that's affecting a lot of industries and definitely yep. the barber world. So Absolutely. And I mean, for like, for us and many businesses, like in the height of the pandemic in March and April, we were down like 80, 85%. So no one was booking appointments. Barbers are trying to figure out how they were going to get any type of income to pay their bills, to purchase food. Like they were just trying to figure out how to make ends meet. And so one thing that we did, um, we just, we discounted our monthly subscription service from $20 to $5 just to like alleviate some of the pains barbers may have had. And then we also, organized a gift card a gift card donation campaign where clients on the app were able to buy gift cards as a donation to their barber. And we were excited to raise over $15,000 for Barbara. So that was pretty dope. Wow. Um, Very cool. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And then, I mean, other than that, like we've just continued to be a resource for barbers, helping them apply for PPP loans, providing PPE to them to help them get back to the barbershop and work um, safely. So yeah, we just continue to figure out how do we continue to be a resource to barbers. And so um, as far as the, the growth during COVID, um, I heard that in early May, so that's right around the reopenings, is that when your users started increasing again? And by how much? Absolutely. So pre-COVID, we were growing maybe 13, 14,000 users a week. Um, but coming out of pandemic in those reopenings in early May, we started growing at 30,000 users a week. So that was super exciting and clearly mm -hmm. a bunch of pent up demand from people who have probably seen themselves without a haircut for far too long. And then barbers now, as they were, states were reopening, they were requiring barbers and barber shops to use software to manage their appointments because they wanted to mitigate walk-ins and then provide some form of contact tracing. And it looks like you got a fresh haircut. Is that through the Cut app? Absolutely. Always. <laughs> got to find a great barber and always got to keep my head like my hair on like a tight. It looks good. Looks great. Thank you. Um, so why is this important to you? I heard that your um, team was all, all of your employees were also, um, you know, people of color, um, black and brown. So why is this important to you? I know that you, you're a big supporter of the black and brown communities um, with the different programs you're involved with on the app. I just read somewhere that you um, partnered with um, Shape Up the, the Vote. Yep. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about that? And then also tell us about your team and why, um, being a minority owned business is important to you. Absolutely. Well, we partnered with Shape of the Vote and that was an initiative where essentially barbers could sign up to receive a bunch of voting resources. So like, um, voting registration forms, um, and other, and other type of resources to help 
their clients get registered to vote. And so we partnered with them to pretty much get that in front of more barbers on our platform. We saw a ton of barbers sign up in around the country. Um, and then in general, I think being a black and brown owned company is incredibly important because it really reflects the people we're trying to serve. So we understand their problems and the way they, and how to reach them, how to communicate with them better than founders who may not be of that group of people, right? And so that's been important to us. We've grown our team now to about 10 of us and everyone on our team is a, a minority, which has been incredibly awesome. Um, and I think that diversity there will, will always breed new ideas and provide a certain level of context to anything that we're working on that allows us to have a better understanding of how to best solve our problems and needs of our users. Got it. And um, as far as um, supporting the barbers in their communities, many of the barbers on your app are part of black and brown communities. How are you supporting them in their entrepreneurial journey as well as the communities that they reside in? Absolutely. Well, I mean, like you mentioned, a lot of barbers are in their communities and they looked at as community leaders. Like barbers will have various campaigns when it comes to back to school or certain like holiday food drives. And like throughout our existence we've continued to support barbers in those so like we've allowed barbers to like send us like su like some um, sponsorship proposals and so if they have certain certain events going on we will contribute to them to make sure that they're able to get those off the ground um like we've even partnered with different barbers on their back to school campaigns to help them reach more customers um where they wanted to give discounts to kids who come in and read a book while getting a haircut right um so yeah we've just tried our best to continue to support um, our local communities whenever we have the opportunity. Love that. So a um, couple more questions. So tell us about your capital journey. Um, I know that you raised around 875,000 in capital um, yep. and it's been stretched over four years, which is really impressive. How did you do that? Tell us a little bit more about that. For sure. And that 875 has actually been more of a, like since we've started and not all at once. So my co-founder and I, we started the company with $10,000 that we had saved up from working. Um, and that got us through like the first year. And then we were able to raise 40 K from local angels out of J the JMU network, which was awesome, which again, helped us survive a little bit longer. And that's your alum. Um, and, yep. JMU, we're an alma mater, go Dukes. Um, and then in 2018, we ran a crowdfunding campaign. And so essentially we allowed a ton of our users barbers and clients to invest in the company. And we were able to raise about 100K from them, which is super exciting and a great validation of our business. And that honestly helped us get into Techstars um, a few months later, which we raised money from them as well. And then last, last fall was when we raised 500K from uh, a seed investor. And we've been able to um, honestly survive off cash flow from the business and that investment wow. to date. And how are you stretching that? Because that, that's... You know, it's been four years. So, you know, how are you, sure. you know, how are you, um, you know, paying employees? Yeah, like, what are, you, what are you doing to really stretch that amount of money? Well, honestly, so for the past four years up until, honestly, the pandemic, it was really just um, a very small team. We were, there, we, there were four of us, and we actually all knew each other from high school, and we all had the luxury of being able to, and fortunate, honestly, enough to be able to live with our parents. So we all were able to forego a salary for those initial years. And then we just had to be super methodic and super um, specific in terms of when and how we spent money. Um, so we would definitely track and trace all marketing campaigns and validate the efficacy before continuing to pour more money behind a certain channel. And so just that discipline there allowed us to get to where we are. And then now that we're starting to make more money and we raised some, we started to just, again, keep that same mentality and idea that we had when we didn't have any money. And that's continued to carry forward um, as we continue to grow and become better capitalized. Okay. And um, what does the future hold for the cut? Where do you see yourself, I guess, even in a year or five years? What does it look like? I mean, I feel like even though we've, we've accomplished a lot this far, reaching the 2 million user mark, 7,000 barbers, I feel like there's so much more that can be done. Um, we want to be the go-to place for all things barbershop related. Like we see ourselves as becoming what Uber did for ride sharing. We want to do for barbershops and build that largest barbershop brand around the country and even the world. So the future really holds us expanding globally, really building a stronger foothold here in the U.S., um, want to have a stronger presence around the country, um, and yeah, we continue to partner with different brands that will add value to both barbers and their customers. And then 
in Q1 of next year, we do have plans to fundraise our Series A, which will, of course, help us achieve our goals over the next 12 to 18 months. Okay. And then um, I don't think I have any other questions. Did you have anything to add that you'd like to to tell the listeners and, and readers? Absolutely. I mean, if you, anyone around the country is looking for a dope barber to get a great haircut, you can download the cut at the cut app. We well, find us on IG um, at the cut app, but also download the cut on our website at the cut.co slash download. Great. Thank you so much, Obi. I really appreciate it. Thank you no for problem, joining Chrissy. us. Thank you for your time. Oh, you're very welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you for joining us on city biz list and we'll see you soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me city biz.